I think the, the question of fees and obviously the question of uh, who runs institutions remains squarely in the hands of universities. And SRCs um, are there, uh, together with different student organizations, better place to engage with uh, you know, the uh, university management in terms of uh, the kind of fee structures that needs to be put into place. Secondly, we uh, do issue uh, guidelines on a continuous basis. I mean, there are certain considerations that the minister has asked the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, together with uh, the ministerial task team on uh, the uh, post-school education and training response uh, to COVID-19. To look at issues around student accommodation, tuition fees, and all of those fees which students have paid, and advise them appropriately in terms of measures that must be take place so that students should not be uh, compromised, but also so that universities should continue to run, uh, you know, post COVID-19. So that's uh, some of the measures that we are looking into uh, in order to ensure that uh, we, uh, uh, you know, cushion the impact that this will have on, uh, on uh, students mm -hmm. and on and I mean, you, you spoke about the measures that will be in place with regards to NSFAS, including uh, e-learning, the uh, handing out of laptops, etc., and the service providers that you've uh, appointed. What about those students who didn't know that they'd find themselves in this position? What measures are being put in place to help them? Well, we have taken into consideration all the students, uh, that uh, are going to our universities. What the minister did was to appoint a task team, uh, and through that task team, work was done uh, to, uh, you know, to look at where students are, what kind of support do they need, uh, and also uh, what kind of intervention can the department uh, do. And we really looked at, uh, you know, different categories of students in terms of the facing in of students back to campus. Part of those that we looked at are, uh, you know, those students who should be completing their uh, qualifications this year, those students who would require exposure to laboratories and workshops, which are on, can only be accessed on campus, uh, those students who are doing clinical and medical studies. But we also said that those students who are in far-flung areas, who do not have access to uh, devices or to data or to connectivity, should be part of the 33% that's considered to, uh, you know, to get back uh, to campus for them to be settled in residences if they don't need to be doing any form of uh, learning uh, you know, through contact, and that uh, that's the kind of support. But mm -hmm. as the minister emphasized today, all students who are uh, qualifying, who are part of the National Student Financial Scheme, uh, and who haven't received uh, devices through their institutions or through the NSFAS will be getting that kind of uh, support from the department. But we must emphasize so that, uh, you know, beyond this emergency interventions, all universities have committed to ensure that their catch-up programs, their boot camps, their all sorts of interventions to ensure that all students are taken along and that no student is left behind. So mm. students who are wherever they are, if they're not able to submit their assignments or are unable to sit in for their examinations or to write up their examinations, they need to record all of that and present that to their university as part of those who will be uh, you know, part of the rounding up for, uh, you know, for the catch-up program uh, when we get to uh, normality. Right, Minister, you embarked on a visit of some institutions to inspect readiness. So you even congratulated those who've instituted uh, the health check uh, instruments to ensure uh, that nobody falls through the cracks, so to speak. But given the situation that we're seeing at basic education level, that have been teachers who have been found to uh, be positive and some have then come into contact uh, with uh, pupils. Are you not concerned that this could filter through to higher education? Well, look, we, we've been working on the uh, potential of uh, getting students back onto campus since March. Uh, we started by, uh, you know, writing up uh, protocols for the uh, safe return of students on campus. 
uh, and those protocols included, uh, you know, things like uh, 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 you know personal protection equipment, uh, things like uh, you know sanitizing uh, campuses, things like uh, education that needs to be given to students as it relates to COVID nineteen. Uh, what I've seen in the three universities and the three uh, Tibet colleges that I've visited, and the minister also confirmed today in his visit to UT, is that institutions are ready. And this is beyond what we have received as support, uh, you know, from all the institutions. This, uh, we want to affirm to South Africans, that is a plan that is intended to save lives, that is primary, and we have ensured that we take uh, the necessary measures and, uh, you know, in order to guide universities uh, and to the colleges uh, to be able to go through uh, this, including screening, uh, possible referrals for people to go in testing, uh, self-isolation, quarantine facilities in some of the universities and Tibet colleges that have got residences. So all those measures have taken place in order to ensure that we minimize the transmission. And what I must emphasize is that the 33% of students will be going back to campus is not a thumbsack number. It is based on science. It is based on health consideration. It is based on, uh, you know, what possibly can happen under lockdown level three social distancing regulations. So it's not something that we just came up with. We are confident that, uh, you know, we will have as little uh, transmission as possible in our institutions if we follow the protocols as uh, prescribed and also if the plans that we have seen are anything to go by.